Did you know that bananas are radioactive? Yeah, I didn't either until recently. Turns out they're so radioactive that they regularly set off alarms at customs and border control checkpoints. There's even a unit of measuring radiation named after them, the bed, or banana equivalent dose. So today, I think it's time that we had a very serious talk about the radiation that's happening in your kitchen, cause uh, not to worry you or anything, but the most dangerous thing in there might just be your fruit bowl. Internet, welcome to Food Theory, the show that's going nuclear with knowledge. Friends, today on Food Theory, it's story time. A story that starts with US Customs and Border Patrol, who for years had themselves a problem. When shipping containers enter the country, they're usually scanned using sensors designed to detect radiation to prevent people from sneaking nuclear material into the country. No more radiation for us, we have enough, thank you very much. And when they do detect high levels of radiation in a shipping container, they launch a full-blown investigation to inspect the cargo and make sure that nothing funny is going on. Except very often, something funny was going on. Most of the containers that tripped radiation alarms turned out to be full of bananas, which wound up costing them millions of dollars in wasted investigations. Eventually, they worked out a way to differentiate bananas from uranium, but still, why was this happening in the first place? Well, here's the thing. While the US has yet to find a banana bomb, the bananas were, in fact, radioactive. Radioactive enough to trip the alarms legitimately. And sure, while US Customs and Border Control isn't worried about those bananas entering the country, should we be worried about those bananas entering our bodies? How big of a concern is radiation in the kitchen? Could our fruit bowl be hazardous? It turns out the answer is yes. Your fruit bowl may indeed be the most dangerous thing in your kitchen, but to understand why and what level of threat this thing poses, we have to start at the beginning. First, I think it's important to talk about what exactly it means for something to be radioactive. Pop culture is full of glowing green spiders and gamma ray monsters, but that's all fiction. What does it really mean for something to be radioactive? Well, this is actually something that I touched on in a previous food theory about what's safe to eat after a nuclear fallout, but radiation comes in two varieties. First is non-ionizing radiation, the low energy safe kind of radiation. This includes everything from visible light to radio and Wi-Fi signals. Your microwave oven, also part of that non-ionizing low energy radiation category. On the flip side is ionizing radiation, the higher energy stuff. This is what people are worried about when they say that something is is radioactive. As you probably remember from science class, all matter is made up of atoms, and all atoms carry energy, but some atoms carry around a bit too much energy. This makes them unstable and prone to decay. When it does, it releases that energy in the form of ionizing radiation, the dangerous stuff. And if you're exposed to that high energy burst, it can actually mess up the atoms in your body. It's all a question of how big of a dose you're getting. Ionizing radiation is harmful because it can actually damage the atoms in your body, but given that each individual cell is completely composed of hundreds of trillions of atoms, and each of those cells is just one of over 30 trillion cells that make up your whole body, a few atoms getting knocked around here and there isn't going to make that much of a difference. It takes a lot of radiation to cause substantial cell damage. For instance, you ever have an x-ray? Well, that's a form of ionizing radiation being shot at your body. That's okay, because the amount of ionizing radiation you're hit with when getting an x-ray isn't big enough to cause real harm to our bodies, unless of course you're getting a lot of x-rays, and, and by a lot, I mean a lot, a lot. According to the American College of Radiology, the recommended safe level of diagnostic radiation exposure for a single lifetime is equivalent to about 10,000 chest x-rays or 20,000 dental x-rays. Now, I don't care how bad your teeth are, some tells me that you're not going to need that amount of dental work. But even if you never get an x-ray in your life, you're still being exposed to ionizing radiation all the time in incredibly small doses from radioactive minerals in your environment. This is often described as background radiation, and this isn't the sort of thing that you can escape by going off the grid and living in the woods is just a natural thing because some of the minerals in the soil contain super low levels of naturally occurring radioactivity. Which brings us finally back to bananas. Bananas are packed with potassium. A typical banana boasts a whopping 422 milligrams of potassium, and a tiny fraction of all potassium atoms, around 1 in 8,500, are the unstable radioactive isotope potassium-40. Now, 1 in every 8,500 atoms might seem like a small number, and it is, but remember 
Remember, a typical banana has 6.5 times 10 to the 21st potassium atoms. That is 6.5 billion atoms times a trillion. Every second, hundreds of potassium atoms in that banana are decaying, producing ionizing radiation. And that's why when you're dealing with shipping containers that hold over half a billion bananas, you get enough radiation to trip sensors designed to detect nuclear material. But okay, that's half a billion bananas. How much radiation are we really looking at from a single one? Not much, to be honest. It's roughly 1% of what you get from background radiation in a typical day. Now, could you die from the radiation inside of a banana? Sure. Theoretically, you could absorb a lethal dose of banana radiation if you ate, like, 50 million bananas. That's not an exaggeration, by the way. A banana has one ten millionth of a sievert, the standard unit of radiation. And exposure levels around five sieverts is lethal. So if you do the math, it's literally 50 million bananas. 13 million pounds of food. 5.9 million kilos. Considering that the average American eats around 2,000 pounds of food per year, you could eat 13 million pounds of bananas during an entire lifetime. Or heck, even 50 lifetimes. In other words, eat up, my friends. Radiation from your bananas is not something that you have to worry about. But radiation from your countertop is. Years back, granite countertops. You know, those things you paid extra to have installed? Yeah, they became the subject of media attention when it was found that some of them were releasing radon. In this case, we're not only looking at the radon that's coming out of it, but to a, a woman that's recently pregnant, we're getting gamma radiation out of it that really has a direct impact on the fetus development. Gamma radiation is a type of ionizing radiation, and the radon mentioned in that clip is a radioactive gas from this part of the periodic table over here, the noble gases. And in a not very noble move, radon is a colorless, odorless gas known to cause cancer. In fact, radon is the second most common cause of lung cancer, right behind smoking. Why though would it be coming from countertops? Well, remember what we just talked about. Granite is mined out of the ground. A ground that, as I mentioned, has radium and radioactive materials sprinkled throughout. So, should we be all tearing out our granite countertops and refinishing our kitchens to avoid dying of lung cancer? The answer is no. At least, probably no. Studies looking at radon exposure from granite countertops find that, on average, the concentrations aren't high enough to be dangerous. However, on average is no guarantee of safety. The concentration of radioactivity and radon emissions tends to vary from slab to slab. Makes sense. Certain regions have higher levels of radioactivity than others, so two seemingly identical slabs of granite could have vastly different levels of radioactivity. In most cases, you are going to be absolutely safe, but you just might be unlucky and have gotten a slab with a particularly high concentration, which is why lots of people have homes with radon detection systems, and why radon checks tend to be an important part of the home buying process. Another source of radioactivity beyond the lookout for? Old ceramics. Yeah, those antiques you inherited from grandma might be giving you a third eye. What was commonly referred to as Vaseline glass? glass, custard glass, jadeite glass, Burmese glass, or, since it was in vogue during the 1930s, depression glass, are all varieties of what most accurately is described as uranium glass, which, surprise surprise, is glass that was made with uranium. And other things too, obviously, but like up to 25% uranium, which is about 100% more uranium than you want in your home. I mean, the uranium does make it look very cool. It also lets it glow under black lights, but, you know, it's also emitting dangerous cancer-causing radiation. Don't worry though, though not all fluorescent glassware relied on uranium for that coloring effect. Some of it was also made with lead. Yay! Speaking of cookware you inherited from grandma, if your kitchen is stocked with stuff made prior to the 1970s, some ceramic dishes were made using glazes that were colored using radioactive isotopes. A lot of manufacturers decided that the best way to get those brightly colored glazes was to use chemical cocktails that, whoopsie, happened to be radioactive. Cause let's really be honest with ourselves, what would you rather have? A nice brightly colored casserole dish or not cancer. Interestingly, different colors of the classic dinnerware contain different concentrations of uranium oxide. Studies have shown that red apparently is the worst. And you know how you're not supposed to put acidic foods like tomato sauce in a cast iron skillet because the chemical acidity of the tomato is going to cause trace amounts of metal to leach into the sauce, thereby giving it a metallic taste? Well, something similar can happen if your uranium oxide coated ceramics come into contact with acidic foods. And let me tell you, it's going to be a lot worse than just ruining the flavor of your spaghetti. Let's just say that any amount of uranium entering your body is the kind of thing that you're going to want to avoid. So, if you're going to eat off of these things, stay away from high acidity foods like spaghetti or blueberry cobbler. Or you know what? Better yet, just trash them. I don't think grandma's going to mind. Inheriting cancer plates is probably not a legacy worth passing on, no matter how much sentimental value they might carry. So, like I said at the beginning of this episode, your fruit bowl is probably the most dangerous thing in your kitchen. Not the bananas inside the bowl, even though they are radioactive, but the bowl itself. Oh yeah, and also your countertop. Or you could always go 
the safest route and just not eat in your kitchen. Treat yourself to a radioactivity free lunch. And hey, while you're at it, make sure you're getting even more free stuff out of that lunch by scanning your receipt using our sponsor for today's episode, Fetch. Fetch Rewards is a super easy to use free app where you earn free rewards on literally anything you buy. And I really do mean anything. Need to replace a bunch of old family ceramics after watching today's episode? Me too. That's not even a joke. Me too. And regardless of whether you're going to Bed Bath & Beyond or Target for all that new cookware, with Fetch, you can actually scan the receipt and get points that you can then redeem for hundreds of rewards, like Amazon and Visa gift cards. Ordering stuff online? Totally cool! Fetch works with e-receipts too. You're already buying stuff anyway. You've already done the hard part of spending your money, so why not take a few extra seconds to earn some of that money back using Fetch? Scan the receipts so today's purchases can become tomorrow's rewards. Stocking up on groceries? That's worth points. Treating yourself to a meal? Points. Trip to Home Depot? More points. Online purchase from Amazon? You guessed it. Worth points that counts towards your next Amazon gift card. And not only does Fetch reward you for making purchases that you're already making, but Fetch has an offer right now for all of the viewers of this channel. Install the app and use the code FOODTHEORY to get 3,000 points when you scan your first receipt. Or you can just use the link down in the description. Again, it's free, it's fast, it's easy, and it's helping you earn back money that you're spending on purchases you're making anyway. It is a win, win, win. So again, that's the link down in the description below. Tell them you're a loyal theorist with the code FOODTHEORY and get yourself a bonus 3,000 points when you scan your first receipt. Thanks again to Fetch Rewards for sponsoring this episode, and thanks again to you for watching this episode. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to, um, go remove some radioactive dishware from my cabinets, and then go buy some non-radioactive dishware, and then scan the receipts with Fetch. So, yeah! Anyway, remember, it's all just a theory. A food theory! Bon appetit!